Hey guys, this is Heretic, and in this video, I'm going to go over the order guard totem and test around and to see how it works so that you can decide if it's the right totem for you. As you've noticed, there's no ads in this video, and instead of my normal intro, I'd like to take a moment and talk to you about a player in Realm 1381 who could really use some good vibes sent his way from everyone who watches this video. He is actually in the DOD Alliance, and they're our main rival in the realm. We fight each other all the time, every day, SOSing and all of that. Um, well, one of their really active players, who's named Church here, he is in the middle of a different kind of fight. He suffers from a very rare disease and will soon be transported over 18 hours from his current location to have an operation that hopefully gets him to a really good place physically. I'll leave a link at the top of the comment section for this video so that you can have more information and so that you can um, give him a donation if you can, um, you know, to help out with the cost. Get better church, we're all here for you, brother. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I've been using the, the flame hammer and I'm gonna show you here. So I've been using the fire totem now and the flame have hammer effect here um, for the last week or so and it's been really good i really i do really like it and i'll have a, another video specifically on that totem but because my actual weakness in, in the game is uh, my front line i decided to go ahead and switch over to the um, order guard totem and but i haven't used it so i wanted to switch over buff it up a little bit, and then use it during this video so that you can see how it works, at least with my configuration. I have heard from a lot of people that if you have the Athena's Aegis, the, um, the shield artifact here, go over and look at this. If you have the Athena's Aegis and you combine that with the Order Guard Totem, you get the Aegis fires off at the beginning of the fight, and then when it wears off, it's about the same time that the Order Guard Totem takes effect. And so the Order Guard Totem, we'll go here and take a look at it. So, so basically what happens when you're using this Totem is that in the battle at 9 seconds, the, you'll get a shield on one troop type. So, and it's going to focus on the front line. So on your solo attacks, if you're doing a straight line attack in your infantry or your cav, those troops are going to get the shield at from 9 seconds, starting at 9 seconds. So at level 3, which is where I am right now, it absorbs 50% of the damage taken. And every time it absorbs the up to the total battle power of my march's current troops, up to 400, for 4 million times 14.4. Um, if you look at it maxed out, it's, it's quite a bit higher than that. It's times 36, so it's the 4 million times 36 there. And, and then as you rank it up here, an interesting thing is that skill level 6, it will after it wears off, you'll actually get a heal on, on troops. So that's pretty pretty cool it's a pretty amazing sounding totem but we're gonna we're gonna find out how that actually works now I, I've applied three different um, artifacts here to get me a total seven because it's a purple it doesn't really matter you can get up to five and at this point I'm not even using it to that degree but eventually yes each one of these artifacts that you add here allow you um, then to spend your your um, rune stones to level up different skills and as you do these you'll get tech so like this I have 3.6 tech uh, for my infantry HP cav HP etc you can look at the total here at the stats overview that I've, I've gotten so far and what matters to me is the cav defense 2.4 cav HP 14.4 archer attack 9.6 and my angel HP 1.5 which is really low but yep, yeah, it's it's all a help. So those are the the actual tech. Um, that's the actual tech that I get from from using this totem in a march. Now the the actual effect we're going to take a look at now, which is 
which is pretty cool. Let's take, let's take a look though, because I haven't, since I've switched over, I haven't actually used it. So I'm going to start with, you know, how can it be used? It can be used in a few different ways. Anytime, the way to think of it is, anytime you send a march out, so you're sending a march away from your castle, you can include a totem. It can only go in one, each totem can only go in one march. So for example, if you're reinforcing five different or three different castles, the totem you send out with each march is the totem that it'll get if it's attacked. Same thing on a tower like in Crown or the um, Alliance Castle in, in the Crown event, that sort of thing. The march you send out will include the totem, um, you know, will include one totem. It can't include multiples. And if you have multiple marches and you've sent, like if I send the order guard out on one march, the next march I send out won't have it. But let's, let's try that out. So let's actually start off with the, um, just to make this easy. Let's go through the star ruins and I'm going to test it out on just a single attack because what I want to know is with this, now how many um, front lines should I send out from my march? So that's what we're going to test out. So I'm going to attack someone, um, this shouldn't be too, too difficult, right? So I'm going to send an attack out. I am cav, so I'm going to remove there. I'm going to lower down. So I'm sending out 26,000 of my tier 12, because that's all I have of my CAV. And normally I would want to send out from, from my march, which is 308,000. I would want to send out maybe 110, 115. Normally, that's what I would do on the ruins. Um, maybe 120,000. And just hope that my back line can keep up and, and knock out their front line first. But with this totem, I'm going to send out less. I'm going to... I'm going to send out like a lot less and see what happens. The thing to, to consider is your front line needs to last at least until that nine seconds whenever the this totem actually begins to work. But I think I can do it here. And I want to send out enough of my... Um, of my angels to actually to help me win this, so... Ideally, you know, I would have a ton of angels. So I'm going to send this out. And let's see this take effect. I'm going to go back down. Nine seconds. So now I have that shield. And you see it there in my tier 12 because my tier 11 is already eaten up. And now look at that. Tier 12 is not taking any damage until it wears off. All right. So there it was a 19 second fight. Let's, let's try it out in another place. Let's try it out in my in a PVE. So let's go over to my Fiend Trial and I'm gonna do an attack here. You know, normally I would send out, um, you know, 20, I would send out about 71,000 or so, 70,000 frontline and then the rest of it would be backline and I would send out multiple different um, groups here and I don't wanna do that um, because what I don't want you know, ideally I'm going in a straight line on things so that when that shield happens, that it covers me. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and, and set up multiple in here, multiple um, front line so that we can kind of watch this work. All right, so I'm going to do this and this. And I'm going to fill in the rest here with these guys. And let's check this one out. So it should happen at nine seconds. So I want my front line to last the nine seconds and it did. And now my tier 12 here has the shield and he's going to hold. Oh, he's still taking some damage, but not as much. So he held on a little bit longer. Now he's back to my 11. So this should be a pretty good fight. And we're able to tell here, like on damage on Fiend, how did I do compared to when I was using that flame hammer. So this will be kind of interesting. So a lot less. So it looks like for Fiend that my, uh, my actual using the flame hammer, I did 2.6 million. Is that right? No, 26 million. And when I'm using the shield, I'm only, I'm only doing 16 million. Let's try another attack here. And let's 
can do is just here. And let's put this even lower down here. Actually, let's bring it up a little bit. Let's bring this up to like here. So the total is kind of close to what I was doing before. And then bring this guy down, this guy up, and fill in. And you fill in here because you, you want to distract that fiend monster as much as you can. So let's see. Let's see who gets that shield at 9 seconds. Okay, so now my tier 11 uh, calf have, has the shield. So let's see if this works out any better. Okay. Lasted a pretty darn long time to allow my backline to do more damage. I think this is going to be a better report. Let's see what happens. Could be completely wrong. Nope. Worse. Huh. Interesting. So for PvE, all things considered, it looks like that flame hammer is going to do better. Um, sorry. To, not, I need to click this, pick up these guys real quick because I hate for that to just sit there. All right, so let's go over and do some actual PVE. I mean, PVP. Because in PVP, I am um, going to send a straight line out. And I'm, this time I'm going to send a lot less uh, front line than I normally would. And, and I do have a target. And what I'm going to do, because people know my position... The way I like to do it is be able to have a little bit of a su surprise advantage here. I have a target. He may have already um, moved off his troops since the since my friend already um, scouted him. But here we go, and we'll see what happens. All right. Here we go. Out of respect for church, I'm not going to attack DOD on my SLS attack. All right, so I am going to go ahead and do this. I'm not going to apply my SOS until the battle actually begins, just in case he doesn't have all the troops that he had before. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to go... I can't go straight line, but I'm going to go a lot less front line. I'm going to go down like here, and I'm going to flood in that back line and have just enough here for my, uh, to, to fill in for with some angels. I could have sent more angels, but we're good. All right, so let's go ahead and send this attack out. Let's we'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to speed it all in. Let's see. Yeah, he's got all of his troops, it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hit my SOS now. All right. You can see, you can see that shield kick off. And we'll take a look at this in the... Uh, in the battle report. Now I'm going to go ahead just as a common thing that you would want to do is go ahead and not put on some kind of a PP shield. I'm going to do a two hour. And confirm that I actually have it. I'm good. So now I'm safe. All right. So let's take a look at that actual attack. So it didn't kill, you know, a ton, but he did have 418,000 troops out there. He, he lost, uh, 175,000 wounded, and he lost 27,000. I, I had 9,700 wounded. So what we'll see is we'll do a follow-up attack. I'm going to go ahead and do it now um, before, before he moves off of that. And I'm going to go ahead and speed my troops home. All right, so now I'm going to send out an attack, and it's going to be a little bit different. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to lower this down again. Pump this up. Give myself as much as I can. I don't know how many 
low level troops, you know, front line I have, but there's some nines, three eights, 11, D26. Ideally, I would have a few thousand here to kind of help me. And the reason I want to do this is I'm going to lose a few troops, but I want those troops that are lost to be my little troops. I don't want to lose my good troops. I want to lose troops that I can easily replace. All right, so the fun part here will be filling this in without going over. All right, let's see if we kept them. It looks like we did. Nope. <laughs> All right, let me go down a couple thousand here. Hate to have you watch me struggle here with my numbers. All right, that's close enough. We're sending this, this guy out. Not the smartest thing to do, actually, because if he does get a uh, reinforcement, it could spell some trouble for me. And at that point, I might consider retreating. But sometimes you just have to kind of roll with it, which is what I got lucky there. So now I'm going to go ahead and shield again because it is the smart thing to do. All right, let's see how we did on that attack. So that attack, you know, I killed 139,000 of his troops. So that was good. So what I want to do is here is my second attack. Let's look at this video replay here. So this is the second attack. Let's see how that shield comes on now. Right, there we go. Yeah, it came on my uh, T11 there. All right. So yeah, that was super helpful because it really prevented any other losses in the attack. So that, that went really well. Let's see how that first one went. And see it randomly, because I'm using two different front line, it's gonna randomly pick between my tier 12 and my tier 11 here. And so you'll see right now, it applied, it went to my tier 12 on the first attack. So you see that tier 12 is kind of hanging back. He's not really taking much damage at all. My tier 11 is taking a little bit more. All right, so that went really well. I do like the shield because, it, look, I didn't go with as many front line as I normally would. Um, because of that, because what I thought was that shield to help me um, protect my uh, my back line and protect my front line long enough for my back back line to take care of the rest. Because I, I, I I'm sure my stats are are pretty decent here in, in comparison, probably. Yeah, and and that's the reason. I mean, you, when your when your tech is is much higher, it's it makes it a lot easier. So there we go on the um, you see the PVP um, effect there with the with the order guard totem. You see the PVE effect, and um, you know we saw that. And you, you saw what would happen within the, the actual Star Ruins. The Star Ruins is what you should use to test everything, honestly. You can, you can get you know, three or four different attacks a day, and you can try different formation combinations. And the same thing now goes with your, with your totems. Um, you know, what's the best combination for you? You can replace, you can change your, the, the totem that you use once every seven days. So, and you can only have, you know, one, one of each, one purple, one blue, one gold. And, and when I say um, replace, what I mean is, so I have all these skill points spent here where I've, where I've used all of these, all of the rune stones to level up. I could also have a blue right now. I could put in a couple of my artifacts I could go through here and find like this one, confirm, I'm not using it. And then I could slowly raise up here. And these skills, by the way, would, would apply to my, um, to when the march goes out as well. And if we, if we look, um, if I send out marches, so if I send out a march to attack this guy, 
And let's, let's go out further away so it'll make it a little bit easier to kind of understand this. And I want to see, because I haven't actually even looked at this, but let's say I attack this guy over here and I'm sending out that totem, right? So the order totem is out. Now I want to go and I want to attack this other monster. The, the totem's not there anymore. So if I had a blue totem or an orange totem or a different another totem, I could use it in my second march. So whenever you send one out, so if I uh, recall this, get him home, and then let's, let's watch this. So you would have to have two different totems actually awakened. So I really don't, I don't, I'm not gonna be able to do both of these. I'm not gonna be able to do both uh, totems right now. But if I was gonna send an attack out, I would be able to pick, like I could pick the totem from this list of the totem that's going to go out with that march. So if you had multiple totems, you could, in theory, I mean, I can't do it right now, but in theory, you could pick from each of the different totems you're sending. Right? Too bad you can't do that with Beast, right? <laughs> okay. But if you wanted to send out some fake attacks without your totem, you know, you could easily do that. Uncheck it, send, send out your fake attack, your dust attacks, Save your totem for your, you know, the, your real attack. So if you, one strategy that, that's used pretty often is you send out, you know, two or three different dust, dust attacks at different people slowly, and then you send out your main attack at, you know, the one that you actually want to hit. And you watch people and how they're uh, reinforcing, you know, and hopefully they're re reinforcing other targets. And you, if you do that with multiple people, it's super smart. You could send out multiple main attacks at multiple different castles and divide up those reinforcements so that you have a better um, outcome there. So we'll do that on occasion as well. Anyway, so I hope, I hope this really helps. And again, um, you know, send your positive thoughts, your positive energy out to another fellow War and Order player out there that really needs... Um, really needs it right now. Um, so we're here for you, church, and we hope you get better soon. Take care. Goodbye.